So in an RC circuit, we've dealt with the two extreme cases where we talk about and immediately when it starts charging or after a long time when it's fully charged. So what happens in between? In between, it gets a little more complicated because as you charge up, your current's going to slow down, which slows down your charging rate over time. So that results in a differential equation. Of course, you're not expected to solve differential equations, so we've developed some results for you. For the simplest of RC circuit, which is a single capacitor in series with a single resistor hooked up to a battery for the charging case. In most of these cases, the assumption here is that the capacitor is initially uncharged, so then you charge from zero onwards. If you want to think about the behavior, we can make a simple graph of, say, the charge over time. We know how big the charge is going to be at the very beginning, which is zero, and at some point later, it eventually reaches some maximum charge, and it approaches it asymptotically. So that's the start and the end that we've dealt with in the last question. In the middle, though, it's going to have an exponential relationship in between. The charge is given by this thing, and since we know that we can get the voltage just by dividing by the capacitance, which doesn't change, this same graph actually applies to the V as well. The V and the Q are directly proportional to each other. But the thing I didn't talk about so much is this tau here. What is this tau? This tau is called the time constant. It's a number that characterizes how long it takes to charge up the capacitor. We know how much it charges up to, but we don't know how quickly it does it, and that's what the time constant does. Some system charges really quickly, and some system takes a very long time to charge. Just to give you a sense of what this tau number means, you can quickly plug in different times with different numbers of taus, and we can look at the charge as a function of the percentage of the maximum charge. After one time constant in so many seconds, you're about 63%. Then you reach up to 86% by, by 2 tau, and you get to 3 tau, you're 95 and 98 as you get to 4. So you never quite reach 100 because it's an asymptote, but by the time you get 3 or 4 time constants in, you're pretty much at your fully charged state. This tau in an RC circuit is simply given by R times C very easy to remember. There's one more piece of behavior we would like to keep track of, and that's in fact what they're asking us here. They want us to talk about current. So current doesn't rise up over time. In fact, it's easiest to deliver lots and lots of current at the very beginning when the capacitor is not charged at all and acts just like a wire. It has some initial current, which then crashes down and eventually reaches zero a long time later when the capacitor becomes fully charged and it becomes acting like an open circuit. So the form of the equation also looks a little different. Instead of the one minus thing, it's just simply a decaying exponential. So let's apply it to this particular problem. Now, this circuit looks a little more ugly, but they're just trying to scare us off. These two are simply two batteries and series, so we just add up their voltage. And this mess of resistor, we already know how to deal with that. Combine, combine, combine. Do the series first, and the parallel, and then you get the whole thing. I'll let you do it on your own time, which is going to give you 38 kilo ohms for your equivalent resistance. So the rest of the problem becomes fairly straightforward. Tau is just R times C. We have our R, 38 kilo ohms. Our C, which is 100 millifarad, fairly big capacitor, by the way. And the math gives us 3,800 seconds, a little more than an hour, because the capacitor is so big. B, they're asking us for the initial current immediately after the switch is closed. So again, this is the case where we treat this as a simple wire. Then we just have a battery with a single resistor. So the I is going to be V over R. 
and we get a fairly small and we get a fairly small current because the resistance is quite high. Now part C, this is the important one. We're trying to make use of these kind of results that we're given. And what they're saying is at some time later, the current is half of the initial current. Plotting that plot there again, it decays and at some time later it's going to be half of that and we want to find out what is this time. We know the expression that gives us the current at all the times. The maximum current or the initial current gets cancelled out and we just do solve for t. Because t is caught up in this uh, e to the power up there, we need to use ln or natural logarithm, log base e, to get rid of it, to bring it down. And then the rest is just algebra with the 3800 seconds for my tau. We get a fairly lengthy time as well to get to half of the current. So when approaching these questions, first of all, you want to verify that it's a case that you can actually do in the sense that you can actually reduce down to a single battery in series with a single capacitor and a single resistor. And then you want to be careful, are we talking about charging or discharging? And if we're asking for the voltage, the charge, or the current because they have different expressions. And then once you get to solving it, as long as you know how to use the natural logarithm, you're all set.